Okay, this is a PC build into the Fractal Node 804 server case. I guess you could call it a server build, or you could call it a mid to low price gaming PC build, or in my case, it's a replacement for the TV server that I use and have used for a long time now that serves the TV to other devices on my home network. I guess the most interesting thing about the build really is the Fractal Node 804 case, which to be honest is an unusual design. It's marketed as a micro ATX chassis, but really it's a lot bigger than a standard micro ATX chassis. So we'll go through the build and the case, and you can decide for yourself whether you think it's the sort of thing that would be applicable to whatever your application is. And during the course of the video, we'll do the usual stuff. We'll talk about the components, we'll talk about the build, and I'll try and give you an overview. Okay, let's get on with it then. It's based on a Ryzen 5 2600 processor, which conveniently comes with a CPU cooler in the box. And I thought it was a good compromise between power and price. The motherboard is based on a few things. Price, a manufacturer I trust, and MSI is one of those, and I wanted M2 SSD slots. I'm not looking for anything really fancy. It obviously just needs to support the CPU, the RAM, and I'm not going to be doing any overclocking. As I said before, my overclocking days are over. I'm going to put the operating system on this SSD, which is a budget 512GB Intel SSD. At the time of build, this was a, a good compromise on price versus speed. And then for the storage for the media, I'm going to be using a conventional 5400 RPM hard disk, just a 2 gigabyte one. I just need a good price, enough speed to serve video, and nice and quiet. I bought 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3333 megahertz HyperX RAM basically bought on price and here's the hard drive that I discussed earlier the 5400 RPM storage drive the graphics card is an ASUS GeForce GTX 1650 at the time of the build this was one of the cheapest of the new generation of graphics cards available online um, and the transcoding software that I use in my TV server will use and does support um, the graphics accelerated transcoding of video so we can make use of it. It also makes the computer more flexible in the future because I could use it as a gaming PC in the future or I could play light games on it if I wanted to with the graphics card in place. I mentioned before the case choice is the Fractal Node 804. It's an unusual choice. It's large for a micro ATX computer case, but I thought it would be good because it offers me flexibility and expandability should I choose to expand it into more server options. And I'm gonna, as usual, get a Corsair power supply. I've never had a problem with Corsair power supplies. I've had lots of problems with other power supplies. I like the quality, I like the reliability, so I'm basically going with what I know on the power supply side. The TV card's a Halpage WinTV Quad HD. Why? Well, really, honestly, because I've never tried Halpage before. They've got a very good reputation, and I thought it'd be interesting to compare with my other car. A nice cup of coffee. It's half past seven, and let's get started with the build. Okay. As usual, we're going to go for a first assembly and boot outside the case just to make sure everything works okay so we're going to install our RAM install our CPU and for this build I'm going to use the stock CPU cooler that comes with the Ryzen it's reasonably quiet I'm not overclocking and it just keeps the cost down the other super nice thing about using the stock cooler is that AMD have actually thought about the installation of their coolers and the installation is relatively simple, which is more than I can say for most of the other non-OEM coolers that I've installed in the past, which involve all kinds of insane bracketry and stupidity. So thank you, AMD. The trouble with all black motherboards and components is it can sometimes be really hard to see what you're doing, so I'm having to get my head torch out and use that even though I'm in a lit room. Um, probably a good idea anyway. 
I do love these M2 SSDs that we can get now that fit straight onto the motherboard and uh, I think it's a really big improvement to messing around with external or sorry separate SATA drives and cables um, so this is a a budget offering from Intel but with relatively good reviews so I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs it's a 512 gigabyte drive which is more than enough for the operating system and any software that I want to install the only thing I have found that can be a little bit tricky is getting this little screw in place and so I'm going to use my little gripper to try and get it installed to begin with probably doesn't help that I've got um, old person's eyesight as well so I just need a little bit of extra help okay so for those of you that haven't watched a build before the plan is we're gonna set up everything outside the case on the kitchen table here we're gonna connect up the power supply we're gonna install the graphics card and we're gonna get just the basics installed and spun up to make sure there aren't any issues before we install it into the case and so it's a time saver in my opinion um, if you want to install it straight into the case and go for it then probably nine times out of the ten you're going to be okay but that one time out of the ten your troubleshooting is going to be that much harder and you're probably going to end up having to rip it all out of the case and put it back in again later so here we are setting up everything on the kitchen table with the aim of seeing signs of life. This graphics card being a relatively lightweight one, which is nice in this application, um, also doesn't have an independent power supply, so that makes the uh, installation in, the in this situation slightly easier. Still need to be careful not to put any undue pressure on the PCIe slot that it sits in though, because obviously it's not supported by anything, so you have to be a little bit careful. But as you can see, we're pretty much there now, so it's just a case of shorting out the two pins that are connected normally to the power switch and switching on the power supply, sorry, first, and then shorting out the two pins and having a look and seeing on the screen whether we can see anything that looks like life. Okay, I film these things actually really while I'm doing them, and this is really me checking the motherboard manual to see whether I've got things right. I'm not trying to patronize anybody. I actually do look at the manual occasionally, obviously as little as I can, um, to make sure that I have got things right. And here is real screen evidence of that. Okay, here we go. The good first impression that I get from this is that actually the fan is quite quiet and the power supply doesn't make much noise obviously so with any luck as long as we don't do a lot of heavy CPU or graphics intensive stuff it should be relatively quiet in its case okay well that's good news looks to me like we've got signs of life and a functioning computer it just needs a bit of BIOS setup to get sorted out and here we go in the BIOS and the only thing I notice is that the DDR speed is wrong, so the default settings obviously aren't quite right. And I'll need to go into the BIOS and manually get my memory up to 3,333 megahertz. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay, so we've got correct memory speed for our RAM. And everything else looks legit. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll take everything to bits again and bang it all in the case I'll probably have a drink before we get started actually so the objective now will be to take the equipment that we've test ran on the kitchen table and install it into the fractal node 804 with the objective of having a running PC that we've already verified so here's me um, just getting a little bit of extra vitamin supplements in preparation for the next part of the build but I'd say we're on track we're only about an hour in and um, I think we've probably made some pretty important strides in the right direction so with the support of vitamin C and vitamin V we shall continue 
So while I get everything ready, just tell you a little bit about it. It's a fractal design case, which um, I've had actually good experiences of the manufacturer before in terms of manufacturing good quality cases. It comes um, with a nice big ventilation fan at the back and a lot of expandability for a case of its size. Although I must say, it's quite a lot bigger than I was expecting. I mean, it, in the picture, sometimes you can always be in sort of convinced that it might be a very small, like a mini case, but it's actually a micro ATX or mini ATX case. And um, I think you can fit up to 10 drives into it. But as you can see, it's actually quite a big case and an unusual size, which means that it's not really a desktop case, nor is it really a tower case. Um, so quite where you would put a case like this, I don't really know. I mean, it's not really a case that you want to put on a desk, and it's not really a case that you want under a desk. So um, in my case, it doesn't really matter too much. It could be a server. So I think it's probably, uh, this is me speculating now, the kind of case that you would buy if you are thinking about building a server that you're going to locate somewhere where you aren't going to be seeing it very much, you aren't going to be interacting with it very much, and it doesn't matter how much space it takes. You want expandability. You want the potential to increase, for example, the number of drives you put in it in the future. But you don't want a full tower case. Um, I'm, having just said that now, I'm thinking, well, in most cases, why would you just not buy a full tower case? And that's a good question. So to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what you would want this case for, but I bought one and here it is. I'm just finishing off the installation of the power supply here. The motherboard itself fits on a little tray on the other side of this kind of, I don't know what you call it, a firewall inside the case on a little shelf and sits flat in the same way as it would in a desktop case. It's ridiculously large for a micro ATX case and it has this dual chamber case layout to try and aid cooling and I believe can support water cooling um, it can support up to 10 three and a half inch or eight three and a half inch and four two and a half inch bays. It can support large graphics cards and has the pre-installed silent series fans, which they are actually fairly quiet. You can take it from me, having tested it now for a couple of months. It's got a side panel window on it, not that that's particularly important to me. Um, and it gives you a little bit of expansion room. Um, essentially, as I said earlier, just make sure you know what you're getting into because uh, it's definitely not a micro ATX sized case. It's a fairly substantial piece of gear. So I'm going to install everything in here, get the graphics card in and give it another whiz up and we should be done. One of the positive things I would say about this case is it's super easy to build in. Unlike most micro ATX cases, got loads of space. Um, if you're an untidy builder, as I am, and you're not agonizing and constantly worrying about airflow and things like that, this is probably the case for you. The reality is though, it's not really a micro ATX case. It's a great big case that you can put a micro ATX board in. Okay, so I'll install Windows. We'll get some TV server up and running and um, we'll have a look at it together. Right, so you can see the desktop now. Uh, Windows installed. I've got my Halpage WinTV drivers installed and we're gonna be using Next PVR as our server software. As I mentioned before, this computer sits in a dusty corner. No one's gonna be watching TV on it. However, if we fire up Kodi, a good initial test is, can Kodi on the same computer as the server, effectively, um, access the server itself, and can we get live TV up? And at the time of build, at the time of recording, Wimbledon was on, and here you can see John McEnroe um, saying something important about tennis, about which I care very little, actually. Um, but uh, good for a test, and appears to be working very well. If you're interested in comments on the performance and quality of the Quad HD Halpage card that I installed, then please have a look at my separate video because I did make one and uh, make a comparison with the, uh, the other video cards that I've used in the past.
The motherboard comes with the usual seldom accessed and fairly incomprehensible management software, the most important part of which is obviously the custom CPU, RAM and graphics card settings and cooling settings. Um, the game boost function I won't be using and I guess, well I say I won't be using it, I guess in the future if I ever repurpose this computer as a gaming computer I might. The important point is that with the right settings and the right setup this case is quiet, cools efficiently and performs very well in its current function. So let's quickly summarize where we got to with this uh, build. I mean, essentially the build is for a TV server, but it's, I think the main notable part of the build is the Node 804 case. What I'd say to people about it is, be really sure what you're getting into when you buy this case. It's not small, it offers a lot of flexibility and adaptability. If you're looking to build a server with future upgradability and additional drive space as a priority, this is a really good choice. However, think carefully about the positioning. It doesn't fit under a desk particularly well and it doesn't fit on a desk particularly well. So I would say be aware of what you're buying. It's hard to say exactly what niche this case fits into. The PC itself though is a good choice for a low to mid price gaming computer depending on the specs that you're looking for. And the positives I would say are the expandability and the quietness of the case and the fact that it comes pre-installed with some good cooling. Okay guys, let me know if you've got any comments and thanks for watching.